Well, I went online and tried to find anything on uh, the gentleman that started the Flying D Ranch here in Montana. Uh, the Flying D is currently owned by Ted Turner, if you're curious. Um, but these gentlemen, this gentleman here, uh, helped start the uh, Flying D the uh, way it is today. It's one of the biggest ranches in the country, or at, in Montana. Uh, this uh, is a short horn uh, bull, and uh, that's the type of cattle they raised. This is a, a picture of a short horn bull, and I'm going to I don't know if I'm going to put one in the background or not. I just got to figure it all out. Did find a better picture of uh, this gentleman. I, I mean, it's just uh, the grayscale. If you remember, it was uh, like this picture here originally. I tried to find a, a grayscale photograph of this one, but I couldn't find one. So. Anyway, this is uh, one brother and this is the other. Or actually, I think this is the grandson of his brother. I don't know which, but anyway, um, this is clothing from that period. Um, not sure how I'm gonna make the two of them get, you know, be together, but I'm uh, gonna try. I think what I might do is put him on this side, him on this side, and have him on this guy's uh, well, I'll just have to figure it out I guess the one thing to do is get started so that's what I'm going to do draw this bull out in the back behind these guys. Looks like the horn comes up and forward and down. Had a great friend pass away this weekend and uh, his name was uh, Lee Poole. He uh, talked to me in a movie in Montana back in the 80s, late 80s. And uh, he was a great friend. He owned a gallery here, uh, probably one of the more successful gallery salesmen I've ever seen. Anyway, he passed away this weekend. It's really sad because uh, he just had the ability to make you feel like you're very special. And uh, has an inspiring spirit about him, so he's gonna be really missed.
doesn't look like much right now, and that's because it, it doesn't look like much to me either. Yeah, I, I was trying to move the head, and the head went flying. It's somewhere. I don't know where. It's underneath my desk, and I ain't climbing under to find it. So, just do another head. It just uh, wasn't looking right. Those of you who've done reliefs, know what I'm talking about when I say it's not easy to do a perspective. Flat and three-dimensional, well, somewhat three-dimensional. What I'm trying to do is have this arm and, and hand in his pocket and his coat or his uh, suit jacket uh, kind of bent back and over the uh, back of the arm to get, give some kind of like eye candy uh, there. And then uh, his other arm will be here holding in his hand, which will go about here. The uh, money that they've got left, which is four dollars and fifty-eight cents, I think it was, wasn't very much money. And I'm thinking about putting the other brother in the background, just a little bit further, maybe right behind this uh, bull. I don't know. I'm gonna work something out of here. That's what I'm thinking anyway. So we'll see if I can do it. Plays a little hard, so it's hard to work with right now.
Well, if you think for one instant that I know what I'm doing, you're wrong. Man, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I'm just sort of playing with shadows and shapes and hoping that it looks like something that's supposed to be.
I'm not trying to portray these guys as old guys. I'm trying to portray them as young men, but uh, with a limited amount of material that I've got on them, I'm pretty well left to my own imagination by using their pictures to try to give them the characteristics of the men that uh, I have very poor pictures of. And uh, one of the brothers always wore a hat and the other one never wore a hat. So this is the guy that uh, I'm assuming was the uh, guy that was responsible for the money. And uh, he had slicked down hair, different than what people wear now. And I'm trying to show that. Best I can. And, uh, just trying to give my hairstyle from that time that matches somewhat what I see in the photograph. The key is not to get over done on the detail, but uh, put across the idea, I guess. Anyway, I'm going to probably call it quits on this for today, only because I want to do some more looking on the internet. And uh, <clears throat> I just noticed some numbers on the picture that I might be able to put in the computer and Maybe find something. I don't know. Looks like he had a bit of a more of a chin than I gave him. I don't think it's turning out too bad right now. I kind of like the idea of what I'm coming up with here. And, uh, I don't think I'm doing too bad. I had no idea what the design was going to be on this thing until I got started. And sometimes that's what you got to do. You just got to get started. And it's like writing a story. You know, when you write a story, you just start writing. Now the other brother, like I said, wore a hat, and if you can look, see, it's a, it's got it tilted back on his head. It was a typical Montana-style hat uh, from the turn of the century, uh, 1900s. Um, Charlie Russell wore a hat, something like that too, and so I'm thinking, got to make a hat. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do it and uh, make it look like one without. Well, I'll work that out tomorrow. I'll get the uh, approval for as far as I've gotten so far. See, the old style had their little pointed thing that stuck out past the collar of the the coat, and it. Uh, I'm trying to match the uh, style of that period. And trying to make it look 1920s or teens in its style. I think it's odd for a rancher to wear a suit. They wore suits to go fishing back then. So it isn't that odd. All right, if you like my video, or any of my videos, please click the like button.
it helps me and uh, if you subscribe that helps me too uh, I promise I won't put out bad videos you'll be entertained and maybe you'll learn how to sculpt along the way because <laughs> I'm learning every time I do something new all right good night everybody and I appreciate your watching my videos.